Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. Um, thank you so much for being with me today. Today is Wednesday. It is February 19th, 2020 as I'm broadcasting live from my Facebook page. And I'm going to try to be really good about my little uh, visuals that I put up today. <laughs> so this is where you're at if you are live with me, um, Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel. and. Um, Yes, and again, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class. And I'm going to show you a really cool card. It's called a Hexaflexagon card. I am so excited. <laughs> this is a good one. Um, I'm just going to make sure that all of my little buttons are working here and I'm going to get my screen set up because I want to make sure that we're ready for rolling for when we go to the next part. So how is everyone today? This is so much fun. The beauty of live broadcasting is that you and I can interact with each other. So um, if you have comments, questions, that sort of thing, chime in. Um, I, I'm not one of those people that that are really good about looking up at the comments as we go. Hi, you guys. But um, just know that I do go back and I read them later. So if you share some helpful tips, if you have a question, I can address those later on. And it's always fun to see all of these names pop up. People that I know, I'm getting to know you guys through this and it's so much fun. So thank you again for joining me. Um, oh. Also, if you comment either during the live or after the live within a week's time, um, you can get entered into a prize drawing. So that's another thing to help encourage you to say hello to me. Um, just know that every comment gets you an entry, or not every comment, but if you comment at least once, you get an entry. And um, I draw a prize at the end of the live broadcast, and then I also draw a prize uh, a week following Typically in my next broadcast, I will, week, I will draw for the one from the week before, if that makes sense. So you have a week. You have about a week's time to leave a comment either in Facebook afterwards or in YouTube because I'm going to upload this to YouTube later on. So, oh, you guys, it's so good to see your names pop up. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so Silver Elite Retreat. It was awesome. We just had it this last weekend. I took my friend Cheryl and um, we celebrated where she's at in her business. She's, she's doing so well. And so I brought her to my parents' house. They have this beautiful cabin up in the North, North Minnesota woods. And so um, it's really fun because they, they treat us like, I don't know, they pamper us. And um, it's like a bed and breakfast kind of feeling. My mom's so good about helping me organize the meals, and so we include her in the stamping, and my dad's so good about making sure that we can drive in and out, and he does dishes, and anyways, it's fun. So we had a great time, and one of the cards that we're gonna do in the live today, well, the card that we're gonna do in the live today is basically um, what we did, well, one of the cards that we did at the retreat. So let's move to the computer because I want to make sure that you can see the supplies that you'll need in case you would like to join along with me either during the broadcast or you can certainly follow along um, afterwards. But look at the measurements. There's hardly any. <laughs> You're going to need a strip of 2 by 12 inch designer paper. I recommend designer paper rather than cardstock because cardstock is stiffer and harder to fold on kind of an angle fold and we're going to be folding diagonal folds so um, the thinner the paper the easier this is um, so and then the whisper white and the extra scraps that sort of thing that's just in case you have a a paper that's going to be hard to do some sentiments uh, to to stamp on um, and i'll show you that because the first First one that I make, I'm going to make two of them. I'm going to make one with the Lily Impressions Designer Series paper, which is a free pick um, during celebration. Should have put this down here. Hang on, watch this. Ooh, copy, paste, but it's available now. So we're going to just go like this. There we go. <laughs> the Lily Impressions is available now. 
And the flowering foil, foils designer paper is going to be available on March 3rd. Uh, so right now, demonstrators can get their hands on it, which is why I have it, and which is why I can show it to you. You may have seen some of uh, some samples out there from other demonstrators sharing their love for this paper. It's beautiful. So um, I'm going to show that off in my second sample. And then we have a couple stamp sets that I'm going to use too, the Well Said and the Heartfelt stamp sets. So I say let's uh, move to the table now so you can see the beautiful brochures that you can shop from for a celebration. Now what does that mean, a free pick? Um, well basically at this time of year if you are a fan of Stampin' Up! products and you want to shop for some of their stuff, again you can go to my blog at stampyourartout.com and click on the shop button. And then once you're in the online store and you're shopping away, you'll notice that you'll get free picks with every 50 you spend. And those items are shown in the stamp, uh, the celebration category in the store. Or if you have your hands on these brochures, you can pick from these items in here. Here is that beautiful paper that I'm gonna demonstrate first. It's called the Lily Impressions. There's all kinds of fun stuff in here. This one, sadly, is all sold out, but that's gonna become a prize today. Yay, I have a little bit of that. Um, gosh, stamp sets, I've shown you this stamp set in the past. There's the Golden Honey paper, just really some, some fun stuff. Now, if your item is unavailable currently and it's saying that it'll be brought back, just know that Stampin' Up! is trying to keep up with the supply and demand. <laughs> so that's a good thing, right? It's a good thing. This brochure is going to be uh, beginning March 3rd. And there are some fun things in here like the So Very Vellum Specialty Paper. Um, look at fun stamp sets, right? There's stamp sets. Um, some of these items you can get at a $50 level, but some are level two. So keep that in mind too. That means that you need to purchase $100 worth in order to get it. But this is free with a $50 purchase, and this is the Flowering Foil Specialty Paper. This is actually my favorite paper for this kind of card. But as I said, I'm going to do the Lily Impressions first. Okay, so let's pull out a sample card. Um, this one here is one that I made with the current Paper Pumpkin Kit. Uh, if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you know what those are. Those are fun kits that you get in the mail monthly. And I'm working on my alternate projects. This is one of them. And it's going to be posted on my blog, I believe the 21st. Uh, that's coming up in just a couple days. I'm editing the video right now. So this is a Hexaflexagon card. I am so sorry. Um, I'm going to have to put a thank you to the person um, directly in like the details of my video, but I, I've lost track of her name. She posted a card similar to this um, using some other products, other paper pumpkin products, and then I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. It's really cool. So have a lovely birthday. Isn't that cool? You'd think there's just two sides to it because it's flat, right? But you know, the beauty of this hexaflexagon card is that it just, it, it has three, three layers basically because of how you're folding it. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Isn't this fun? Okay. Um, oh, and so you, if you can flip it over and then it's like twisted the other way. So we want to make sure it's back to the beginning here. Now in my video that I did with the alternate projects, I don't feel like I gave this as good of an instruction. So um, if you're watching this on Saturday, you can compare and let me know which one you think I did a better job at. I'm hoping to do a better job at this one. So that's the one that I'll be sharing on my blog on the 21st. And right now we're going to take some Lily Impressions designer paper. So I've got a 12 by 2 inch strip. I'm going to zoom out just a tad here. Um, and we're going to do some fun folding, okay? Let's give this a go. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to take a one end, one of my two inch um, wide ends here, and I'm going to fold it at an angle so that I can see the designer paper on the back side and the front side. And we're going to be creating 
an equilateral triangle visually. <laughs> this is the hardest part of the whole thing. There's another hard part, but this one's the hardest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some paper and I'm going to line up this straight edge of the paper with the straight edge of the bottom of the triangle that I'm making. So I'm placing it right here, and you can do this with a ruler or whatever, but I'm trying to ignore the rest of the paper right now. So let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm bringing this straight edge that again was my two inch edge over here, and I'm bringing it across at a diagonal fold so that it's coming right down the middle of this equilateral triangle. And it doesn't matter if it's exact or not, but you wanna get it pretty darn close, okay? The closer you get it, the easier it's gonna be in the end as you're folding this all together. Let's grab our bone folder and crease it down because that looks pretty good. Okay, so can you see this again? We have an equilateral triangle. We have a base, we have another side, and we have another side. And all of these sides will measure um, the same distance. It doesn't matter what it measures right now because I don't want you to get into pulling out a ruler and getting so worried about it. But now this would be an incorrect fold if I were to bring this over like say here. Because you can see already that this is much skinnier than this side over here. So you just want to be able to visually um, eyeball an equilateral triangle. Okay? Again, don't get stressed out about the measurements. This way you can apply this idea to other strips of cardstock, whether they're a little bit wider and longer or whether they're narrower and, and shorter, okay? So, are you ready? All right, that's the hardest part. If you got through that, you're good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna take the point, so there's two points here. There's this one and this one, okay? And here's the tail of it, but we've got these two points that we folded in already and we're going to take the one that's that's further in okay not the one that sticks out but the one that's further in we're going to put our fingernail there right at that point and we're going to bring this corner that sticks out further up and we're going to line it up with the top edge okay <laughs> so what we're doing is we're taking this straight edge here that's an angle basically and we're going to bring it over and we're going to bring it right up to this edge here we're connecting so now your equilateral triangle is really standing out okay and i'm going to just make sure i got that tucked in right okay now we're going to flatten it and see it's not perfect it's not perfect and that's okay you can see a little bit overhanging there it's still going to work I promise you. All right, so now we're gonna flip it over again. So you just flip it over and you've got that same look where you've got a tail coming out here that we haven't gotten to yet. We've got a point that's further in and a point that's further out. We wanna take that point that's further in, hold our fingernail there so that we can help bend it and we're bringing this angled edge up to the top to line up with the rest of it and we're gonna flatten it out. This is so much fun. You guys can do this. I know you can. We're going to flip it over again. It doesn't matter if you flip it that way or that way. It's still the same. We're going to grab that point that's further in with our fingernail. That's just to kind of hold it in place. We're going to grab this angled edge. We're going to take that whole section and bring that angled edge up to the top. And we're going to crease it down again. Okay, here we go. <laughs> flip it over. And again, hold it there and connect. You're gonna keep doing this. We wanna have multiple triangles that are being formed here for our hexaflexagon card, and they need to be equilateral triangles or somewhat equilateral. <laughs> again, I'm not wanting you to worry about the measurements. I just want you to get as close as you can because it's gonna be easier to put the uh, card together as long as you're trying to be accurate, okay? So we're on our last couple folds here. So there's one more fold here that I want you to do. We're flipping it over. We're gonna 
put our fingernail there and again we're going to bring it over you might have to flip the whole thing over like this in order to connect that edge with that edge and that's okay you can do that and then this little spot here we're going to trim off so we're just going to trim that in fact we're going to trim the next one too but i want you to trim this one first because you know what you don't have to worry about being mathematically challenged Rhonda just visualize it right because <laughs> there's no I didn't even use a ruler on this one so we're just going to trim this off but we're going to trim this other section off here too the one that was attached to that and we're trimming them both off because this is going to become a little layer that's going to help make our card look good so right at that fold line we're going to trim again like this and this one we're going to save this one we're going to scrap get rid of that but this one we're going to save so just set that aside i'm not sure if we're using it this way or this way we'll find out in just a minute i think we're using it this way so we're going to unfold it now and what you should have is nine triangles and one little half triangle that we started with all right so let's count them to make sure we've got one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's why this 12 by two inch size is really great. Now, if you end up having a different size strip of, of paper, you can make it work as long as you have at least nine triangles and a little bit of an edge to connect with, okay? If you have 10, if you have 11 triangles, you can always trim things off, right? Okay, so, and again, I'm gonna do two cards. So you should be able to be, um, following along when I do the second card maybe you'll have a strip of paper with you and you can do it with me okay so now what we want to do is we want to take the end that does not have that little extra piece remember this was our extra piece here our half piece we're gonna put that on the end of it and we're gonna start with our triangle end okay we have one two three triangles we want to fold right after that third triangle so we're folding it and you can see it's going to fold in that direction. So that's the, the way we want to go. So now we have one, two, three triangles again. Okay, so one, two, three, and we're going to fold again. Now notice it's coming together. <laughs> this is where it gets tough. So what you want to do is you want to take the one that's on top and put it underneath this one that was over here. Okay. So you're taking this one, it was on top, you're tucking it underneath, okay? My, my mom and Cheryl are gonna be looking at this video later on going, well, I wish she would have been better at teaching it when we were up at the cabin. <laughs> I'm getting better and better every time I do this. Okay, so now we have pockets and I want you to look at those pockets, okay? So what we've got here as we lay this flat is we've got a pocket here, we've got a pocket here, and we've got a pocket here. We do not wanna put tape anywhere or adhesive anywhere inside of those because the only place that we should be connecting is right here. And this piece naturally is gonna to wanna to fold over right on top of that last triangle. So that's where we're gonna glue. I know it looks like a funny spot right now, but that's where we're gonna glue. So we're gonna grab our multi-purpose liquid glue and we're gonna connect this little triangle area with the top of that visually okay don't worry if it's if it's not lined up perfectly remember I told you it's okay as long as you're getting as close as you can okay all right <laughs> all right now so what um, thank you Kathy I actually watched a couple other videos that were done with this hexaflexagon card style and um, it was frustrating for me because I, I had to watch multiples of them to try to get this to work right, and I finally got it. So I'm trying to share tips that I didn't get through those other videos <laughs> that I saw. Okay, now after we've got that glued on, we have this little space here that looks kind of funny. So that's why I said keep this. What we're going to do now is we're going to glue that right over that spot, and it's going to um, help to make this look like a triangle again. So that's what this is for. We'll just put our glue on here. And when you're gluing with the Tombow Multi-Purpose multi Liquid Glue, be really careful to just use thin, thin lines of glue. 
Um, if you're a tape user, I'm typically a tape user. You can sometimes overdo it accidentally. You don't wanna do that. So we're just gonna fold up this little edge here to make sure it's gonna stay within and we'll press it down. And again, I don't have it perfect. This is actually a good thing. I'm glad that I don't have it perfect on purpose so that you can see that this will still work, okay? We're just gonna let this set for just a second here. We're gonna check the pockets now. So pocket, that one still works, right? You can still put your, your tool through there. There's another pocket. And here is our last pocket. We're doing great. If you've got that, you're good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna just do a little trimming. So we're gonna just bend this up a little bit. And let's trim that off. Just kind of line it up. It's okay if it's not perfect. All right, so now you've got this little base here. And when you bring the hexaflexagon together, it's gonna naturally bend a certain way where you've got those little pocket openings. You're gonna grab those pockets and they're naturally gonna open up. So this is another side. And as you bend it again this direction and squish it together, it's just naturally gonna go in those directions. Okay, pretty darn cool. I know you guys can do this. Here's some tips. Um, I've got a couple finished cards here uh, and I used, I used like, few different designer papers to make these other cards. So for this one here, I used this one. Okay, it's got the Melon Mambo on one side. I'm gonna zoom out just a tad here. For this one, I used, oh gosh, I've got a few in here. That's the same as this one, right? Yep. For this one, I used the, the, the one that's got the green on the other side. Okay, lots of fun papers in this kit. They're very similar. They all have a lily pattern to them. And they're all upside down. <laughs> and then for this one, I used the one that has the, um, the orange color on the other side like that. Okay, so let's take a look at these. This one here, I had really dark colors on and I didn't want to stamp directly on the triangle pieces. So instead, I just grabbed some strips of white and I stamped on those and I cut in between so that I could do those folds, okay? So the first page says, congratulations. And as I move it together, I've got time for a new adventure. So again, just cutting strips into sections. And then as I open it up, the third layer says, well done. And I used some holiday rhinestones, I believe they were. Yes, the holiday rhinestones. And the thing with the rhinestones is they do give a little bit of a lift to them. So in certain spots where they might come together, you can actually feel like two, like in this spot here, I have two rhinestones on top of each other accidentally. So it's pretty bulky, not too bulky because it's a pretty flat card, but just keep that in mind that if you're going to be adding rhinestones or something like that, you want to make sure that they're not right on top of each other in a fold. Here is another one. This one I stamped with just the tuxedo black ink. This one I stamped with Blackberry Bliss, okay? Um, so the tuxedo black ink I just chose because I wanted to have a real neutral color. And I used uh, some, oh gosh, these are the self-adhesive sequins that are like in bright colors and I don't have the supply item in my head right now for that. I will try to list that in my blog. Okay, so this one says, you mean the world to me. You make me smile to my always from your forever because this card really is a forever card. Thank you, Cheryl, for sharing that. She made her card with that saying and I thought that was pretty clever. So that's another one stamping directly on the paper because again, that one was light enough. Now you'll also notice that on this one here, I have some extra layers of triangles. So what I did for that was I took one of my strips and I don't think I have it. Oh, here. I took one of my strips and I just kind of took and started, um, well, I think I folded it first. That's what I did. I folded it first. I folded a bunch of these and then I cut them into individual triangles. And that's how I got um, these triangle pieces that I just stuck where I want. 
wanted, okay? Another thing that I wanna mention besides doing white strips or folding another base and doing triangles, because, oh, here, here's an example of that. So you can fold another base and then just cut out your triangles and layer them on. But another way to get a layer that looks pretty close to an equilateral triangle is to punch with the heart punch pack. So I am now going to take the heart punch pack, which is basically two punches, and I'm gonna grab some scrap white, okay? So I've got this scrap white, which, or this, yeah, this is my two by 12 inch scrap of white, and this you can actually punch your smaller of the two hearts from, okay? But then when you get to this one, which is another punch in the pack, you need to use a slightly taller scrap. So I just grabbed another white scrap and I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. So with this one here, it's easy to cut, okay? We're gonna zoom, zoom in once more here. So this one's easy to cut into an equilateral triangle and it's somewhat equilateral. It's not perfect, but it's somewhat. So you're gonna take the two top parts of the heart and you're gonna line them up with the quarter inch line here on your trimmer. So if they're both touching right on top, you're gonna to hold firmly and you can even hold right on top of here so it doesn't move and you slice and then you're gonna take and rotate it so that this little spot where it's, it's angled meets with the bottom and you're gonna put those two points in the channel of your trimmer and connect them. So this point to this point and without moving it, hang on. <laughs> We're gonna take those, hold it down firm and slice. And then we've got two more points, this point and that point to connect. So lay them in the channel of your trimmer, put the arm down, hold everything steady. And you've got a pretty, pretty equilateral triangle. Okay, this will fit pretty well into the triangular, triangular areas of your card if you want to stamp on them. This one makes a slightly bigger one and it doesn't make it too much bigger, but it, it's amazing how much of a difference it makes. So watch this. Um, oh, Diana wrote, if using wider strips, you can make it bigger. Absolutely, yes. That's why I didn't wanna give you any measurements with rulers because if you have a piece of designer paper or um, you know, a thinner kind of paper like designer paper that's longer than 12 inches, you could make a much bigger card. Absolutely. Okay, so now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line up the top two bumps on the top of the heart with that quarter inch line there, cut across. Now, this isn't deep enough because really you could go a little bit further in. But I did that first because there's no line that's really close that goes right beyond the quarter inch. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this edge and we're gonna move it so it covers up the dark part of our trimmer. And that will give us a pretty accurate area. Sorry, my paper is sticking. There we go. Okay, so that's gonna give us a pretty accurate area. See now it cut off just a little bit more and now we're kind of at the widest spot of that heart up there. So we're gonna take that point and connect it with the middle of the bottom scallop there. And we'll take this point and connect it to that same spot. Um, that was a good question, Diana, yes. Okay, now watch this. I should have done these in two separate colors so you could see, but you can layer these on top of each other and that one is, I hope you can see that, that one is slightly larger so it does, it's gonna take up a little bit more space. On that note, what stamps fit in here? Well, <laughs> we have the heartfelt stamp set. And the heartfelt stamp set coordinates with those heart punches. So I thought, let's pull in three of the stamps from that set. Let's line up our um, triangles so that they look like they're gonna work in here, okay. And I'm using the Tuxedo Black Memento ink. Ha! I'm on task today. Watch this, you guys. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. Okay, here we go. So lucky to have a friend like you. 
You'd think that you wouldn't want to use this set anymore because it's, you know, Valentine's Day is over. But you can use these sayings any time of year. This one says, roses are red, violets are blue. And really, you can stamp it anywhere. This is such a rotational type of card that is, it's really okay to stamp however, whenever, wherever. Um, in other words, when I put these down on the triangle pieces on my card, you'll see that they can pretty much go in different spots. Let's take this off here, turn these over. Let's connect them together and do some adhesive across the back really quick with our snail. If we put them right next to each other, you can go right into the corners of all those pieces super quick and easy like that. Okay, oops, let's just do a little bit more here. Okay, so on the first one, we wanna have it say, I think it's roses are red, violet are, violets are blue. Yeah, 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 that would be first. Okay, so let's say this is the top of our card. I don't know, let's stick it here. How does that sound? And we could, we could put it however we want, but I'm gonna stick it here. And then you wanna fold it in, open it up, and let's put another one. That would be this one. Um, so lucky to have a friend like you. Fold it in, open it up, and this is the last one. And we'll just stick that right here. How's that sound? Love you lots. So as you open up your card, roses are red, violets are blue. So lucky to have a friend like you. Love you lots. You can give that to a friend any time of year. You can decorate this up with our, where are they? Here they are. With our glitter enamel dots. And here is a full pack. This is what they look like. I obviously like the green. <laughs> I love the green. It's all gone. <laughs> no more green. Bummer. But I'm going to use the um, pink ones right now. These have just as much of a lift as the rhinestones, so just you know, keep that in mind that if you're going to be using these fun little guys, that um, you know you wanna you wanna not have them kind of right on top of each other. Okay, <laughs> so love you lots. Let's put some over here. You can kind of feel as you go where they're sticking up, where they're bunched up. Um, I don't know. Let's put. Could even put them on the designer paper. I kind of like them off the designer paper though. So we'll stick a couple here and we'll stick a couple on here. So fun. I love these cards. I'm obsessed. <laughs> All right. So lucky to have a friend. Oh wait, it go the, it went the other way. We start here. Here's the beginning of our card. Roses are red, violets are blue. So lucky to have a friend like you. So it's a finished card. It's pretty quick. If you get the folds down, it's pretty quick. What's the next paper, Rachel? Well, here we go. Let's take out our grid paper. This is our floral grid paper. Fun stuff to use. Yes, available to you as well. And we need to zoom out a bit so you can see it better. Um, we're gonna start sponging. And we're gonna sponge with our lightest color first. We're using sponge daubers. This is Daffodil Delight. We're gonna open it up, take and put the, the dauber right on the end of our finger like that, pounce on top of the ink, and then you can just kind of come in and do a circular motion and add some color here and there on your paper. This is our foil, uh, what's it called again? Flowering foils paper. So I'm gonna stop for just a minute I'm gonna show you what you wanna do after you've done a few of these, and they don't have to be equal. I'm kind of going randomly here. But we're gonna take and put a tissue on top, and we're gonna rub any ink, any excess ink, off the surface of the foiled areas. And see there, I removed some ink. That would've gotten on my hands. <gasps> that wouldn't have been good. Rachel does not like to get messy. Um, so then after you've done one color, and I would go further on this, but I have a finished one that I'll show you in just a minute. Then you'd come in with another color. This is our granny apple green color. And so you'd come in and you'd do some spots of color with that. Okay, 
And you're just gonna do that throughout your strip of paper because that gives it some pizzazz. It makes it look better than just like a, a real neutral color. See, I got more, more ink off of there. We're gonna set these aside and I'm gonna pull in a finished one. And that's what it would look like if you colored the whole thing. It's got a silver sheen to it because this uh, flowering foils designer paper has a rose gold and a silver sheen. So what do the papers look like, Rachel? I didn't show you all the lilies, did I? I don't think I have all the lilies. Um, you get in your pack, let me make sure here, there's four different designs and we get 12 sheets. So you get three of each of these designs. So this one here, lots of um, multi, multi foil. So you get the silver and the rose gold. This one, which I just did is the silver. This one is the rose gold and this one is both. Okay. Um, it's got flowers and, and leaves really, really pretty stuff. All right. So now we're going to bring in a stamp set called Well Said. Hang on. <laughs> We're bringing the stamp set in called Well Said, and this has lots of different words that you can piece together. I highly recommend this stamp set. I know it's a, a pricier one because it's got, you know, two boxes worth, but you can do a whole bunch of different sentiment combinations with this set. And this is perfect for these hexaflexagon cards because you can do uh, three, you know, three different views of sayings, of sentiments that coordinate well together. As you saw on my two cards here, these sentiments all come from that, that stamp set called Well Said. So let's take our trimmer. Um, oh, we've already trimmed it. We've already got it to two by 12, it's two by 12 already. And so we're gonna start the folding process. So I'm just gonna make sure that I've got my first fold as accurate as I can get it without being OCD. <laughs> Let's take a darker color. Let's just take the edge of our pierce mat and line it up, in fact, here. Let's move this away now so you can see the dark background behind it. We're going to fold this so that this edge is somewhat centered in the middle of our um, equilateral triangle that we're trying to form right here. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in again. So there's our equilateral triangle with our straight edge from the side here, splitting it down the middle. And that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna fold it flat. Don't measure, just look. Okay, you can do it. Um, now we're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna do that same technique where we pinch it right here at the top, and we're gonna fold this edge up to this edge. Grab your bone folder, crease it down. Are you noticing something? This paper, this is why I love this paper. Not only can you make it colorful if you want to, or you can leave it metallic and white, but it's white on the other side. So you don't have to worry about bringing in the heart punches if you don't want to. You don't have to worry about having extra white strips of paper. You don't have to worry about having a designer paper that's light enough to stamp on. This is light enough to stamp on, okay? <laughs> All right, we've done that. Now we wanna flip it over. We want to pinch it right there with our thumbnail, and we're gonna grab this edge and bring it up to this edge. Fold it flat. Oops, hang on. There we go. Flip it over, grab it in that corner there. Fold it flat. See, it's it's happening again, and we're not super accurate, but we're getting as close to accurate as we can without making ourselves go crazy, <laughs> okay? I love math, and so it kind of bugged me that I didn't know how to get this equilateral triangle perfect, and then I did a couple, and I was like, oh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's totally fine. So, so there you go, okay? All right, we got two more folds here. This one and 
one more. And again, we're gonna cut it the same way. Oh, yeah, this one we have to bring over like that. We're gonna cut it the same way where we trim off this excess piece here. We don't need that one at all. And this one here, the one that's not a half triangle, but this one that we just last folded, that we're also gonna trim off. So grab that crease line and cut right on the score. And save that because that one will work with helping to cover up our, um, our weird spot, okay? All right, let's extend it out, unravel it. You've got nine triangles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna start with this end that's the exact triangle, not the half triangle end, but this end. And we're gonna count one, two, three, and fold it. Oh, look at that, it's folding the other direction now. That's totally fine, but don't fold it the opposite way. You wanna fold it the direction it was originally folded. And now we're gonna count. In fact, here, if we flip it over, you can see one, two, three, right? So it's one, two, three, and you're gonna fold it again. And now this piece that went under before has to go over. So it just has to be opposite of where it went before. And here's our extra tab that we're gonna glue with. So looking at our pockets again, we have a pocket here, we have a pocket here, and we should have a pocket here. So there should be no glue between those areas. We're just gonna glue this on top of that. Let's flip it over. Let's take our multi-purpose glue out. And we're gonna get some glue on that surface there and glue it down like that. Okay, just hold it still for a while. I have a little bit of seepage. <laughs> I added too much glue, oops. And then this piece will get glued on right here. A little bit thinner, Rachel. Don't need a lot. All right, so that piece gets stuck here like that. And we can trim off any excess that we may need to. That looks pretty awesome. I'm so excited. See, I have little flaws and that's okay. If you wanna trim up stuff, you can. Um, it's it's not perfect, it's just as close to perfect as possible. <laughs> That's funny. Just don't make it bad. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so we've got our spots done and now we can bring in our stamps and we're gonna bring in a few stamps from this set, the Well Said set, okay? We're also gonna bring in these fun little guys again. And our color this time is gonna be Coastal Cabana. Oh, I have to zoom out. Coastal Cabana. Okay, we're gonna open up this color and we're gonna stamp on here. This one says heartfelt, oh, sending. I wanna go with sending first. Sending. And it doesn't really matter where you start, right? Sending. Heartfelt. And now we're gonna take and bring it together in the middle, open it up. Okay, here's a new page. Um, and this one's gonna say, wishes, oh, heartfelt, get well wishes, get well. And we're gonna stamp that maybe over here. We could stamp it like this, get well wishes. I think I got a little glue that seeped into this area on the side. I'm so sad. I don't know if I have any, any adhesive eraser that can get that, but you see that? I got a little extra glue on there. So, hope it doesn't affect my card. Okay, turn it this way and open it up. We might have to put something over it, like another triangle. I could cut out another triangle. <laughs> All right, and on this page, on this last section, it's gonna say, um, what is it gonna say? Oh, know that I know that love, prayers, and caring surround you today. So we'll just stamp that wherever it fits on this last one. And we can take and grab our glitter enamel dots. I only have blues, pinks, and purples left. And we'll just add a couple fun 
I love I love just adding a little touch of something on these cards. I think it, it needs something. So we'll squeeze it together again, open it this way. We'll just put a couple up here. Or actually maybe a couple down here. Oh, this is so fun. And then this last one, which is actually the middle page. There, I think I need a bigger one, hang on. I love these, these dots, obviously. I'm using them all up. We'll put one there. And let's put a tiny one next to, let's put a tiny one next to this one. Let's move that one up. <laughs> okay, so go backwards for just a second. Here's how this one looks then. Sending heartfelt, get well wishes, and again, I'm going to clean that up. <laughs> know that love, prayers, and caring surround you today. So, very fun. Very fun, right? All right, we're going to try to put these out so that we can... There. I, think we'll... I don't know. They're not going to lie completely flat because... I have to put a weight on them or something, but I want you to be able to see them in the camera. Plus I have two more to show you. <laughs> I'm not gonna walk you through them. That, these two, these took a while, but I'm gonna show you a couple others that I, actually I only have one other that's finished. And it's the same, it's the same words and the same embellishments, but this is one that I didn't color and it's just in copper. I'm sorry, it looks like copper. It's rose gold and blue right? The Coastal Cabana Blue. So there, there's another example of one. And these were just ones that I had started. I, I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm making more and more. <laughs> Having a blast with this. I'm going to set up the computer here because I want you to be able to see um, our prize drawing situation that we're going to do here in just a second. I'm also going to share with you the prizes that we're going to draw from. So I'm going to do that first. I hope that you enjoyed this. This was fun. Okay, um, prizes from last week. Let me just give you a, a glimpse at those again because we still have some winners to pick from last week. Where are they? Are these them? Hang on. Oh yeah, there's the pens. I'm grabbing them, hang on. <laughs> okay, so we have prize winners to grab from last week's uh, Facebook Live that has been around for about a week now and it's on YouTube. So the prizes are these fun little peaceful poppies elements, sequins, and a fun pen that says Stampin' Up on it in the orange color or in the um, poppy red color. So those are the ones we're going to draw first and then we're going to pick winners for today's prizes, prize choices. There's prize choices again. So today I'm going to draw one live winner and you have a choice between two celebration stamp sets um, or a celebration uh, packet of embellishments. Okay, so the Gangs All Near is one of them. This is a stamp set that you could choose if you're today's winner. You could also choose the Happy Birthday to You stamp set or if you really are wanting these embellishments that um, are not available anymore, this is pretty much a full pack plus extra. Um, so there's some extra twine in there. There's two full rolls of twine and then the fun little sequins that came with it. It's not in its original packing, packaging, but I have these ready to give away. So those are the choices for today. Let's go to the computer and let's set it up here so we can, there we go. All right, <laughs> yay. Um, let's draw for winners. So today's, um, let's see here, we're going to have to go to, oops, no, I didn't want to go there. I was there. Shoot. Hang on just a second. <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to, oh, I clicked on something and it moved, didn't it? Okay, so we're going to click on our videos. We're going to draw the winners from the last, uh, the last week's video. It's not going very fast. Videos. Oh, there it is. Okay, scroll down. And we're going to grab last week's, which was the vertical sticky note pad and pen holder. We're going to grab the link from that. 
and we're going to put it into our comment picker. Um, how many people do we have to choose from for the winner for that? I love it. Tiffany's already yelling out, pick me. That's awesome. <laughs> Yay. Mike, remember, you got to do that too. You were saying that last time that, <laughs> that it's your turn to win. Okay. So we have 256 people who have commented on that video since last week. Thank you. Here we go. Who's the winner? And it's, oh, it's, it's a different Mike, but Mike Montgomery. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Say yay for Mike Montgomery. You are the winner from last week's um, live on the, the pen and, and sticky note holder. And then we also have to pick a winner from the YouTube, bra, uh, the YouTube video on that. So let's go ahead and grab the link for that video and put that in our comment picker. I think this one is, yeah, this is our YouTube one. Okay, awesome. All right, we had 142 commenters for that. We're gonna click start. And who's gonna be the winner for that one? Yay, I love it. You guys are all like cheering, cheering, yay. Lori Cross, Cross? I think that's how you say it. No, it's probably Cross, because it has an E after an F. Yeah, that's probably Cross. Lori Cross, you are the winner. So um, you two get to have those poppy element and sequin and pen packs, okay? Um, before we draw a winner from this week's video, the live one, I just want to mention um, before I, you know, have you guys depart that if you are finding that you're in love with Stampin' Up! products, you're purchasing a lot of them, make sure that you don't just place a $42 order in the online store. Place a $50 order, okay? You can at least get um, a celebration pick that way during this time of year. Celebration is, again, a great promotion. It's, it's already going on. It usually lasts January through March. This one is going through the end of March. Um, if you want in on that uh, flowering foils paper, you just have to wait and order starting March 3rd, and you can get in on that. Um, also, if you're finding that you're ordering at least $100 worth of stuff, well then you can get the level two picks instead. Or if your wish list is even higher, I encourage you to get the starter kit. Now you're, you're going to have to forfeit those celebration items for a while, but once you get the celebration kit, which is actually like the best deal ever, it's, it's almost like 50% off on the everything. Um, because you get free shipping, you get $125 worth of product for only $99 plus tax, you get a really cute little mini trimmer, you get an extra bonus stamp set of your choice, um, you get a fun 6x6 six six, uh, sampler paper pack, a bonus paper pumpkin kit um, that gets thrown into the starter kit. There's all kinds of fun things. And you don't have to do what I'm doing. You don't have to do parties, you don't have to do that kind of stuff if you don't want to. Most people who get the, the starter kit get it so that they can enjoy continual discounts in the future. And I welcome you to our group if you wanna do that. You would become a demonstrator, but you don't have to do demonstrator things if that makes sense. It's a great deal. So, and that, once you get the starter kit, then you can go back in, make another order at a discount and get more celebration things, but with your discount on top of it. So um, more information, you can go to, oops, where is it? There it is. You can go to my blog at stampyourartout.com and you can click on the uh, link that says join the fun and then it'll tell you more about all of that. Um, okay, we're gonna take that off of there. We're gonna draw, let's draw for a prize. Oh yeah, see, you can see that. Join the fun right there. Get uh, the starter kit or my community can learn all about it. Let's go back to that last tab. Here we are, we're gonna refresh the screen. <laughs> Gave you time to put comments in, you guys, right? Okay, here we go. We're gonna grab the link from our live. The flowering foils. I hope you guys had fun today because I sure had a blast teaching this. I was like, it was, it was so much fun. <laughs> All right, how many commenters do we have live with us right now? 144 of you are live with me. Yay. Let's pick a winner. Here we go. Crossing your fingers, right? Pick me, pick me, pick me. <laughs> I love it. I love seeing all your comments saying, pick me, please. It, oh, Amy Todd, congratulations. <laughs> I almost uh, 
was in too much excitement to even tell you that. Okay, so I want to click, oh, here, I gotta click on your name because you're one that I'll be able to reach right away through your comment. Um, the other two, I have to kind of find you. So if I have to find you and I don't find you, you need to contact me. Um, if you don't claim your prize within a couple weeks time, I throw it back into the prize bin. So um, please contact me. Next week I will do another live and I'm bringing to you another project that we did at the Silver Elite Retreat. Um, you're gonna love this one. So I hope you come back next week. Next week is Wednesday, February 26th, the day after I get my taxes done. <laughs> Yay! I will be ready and so thrilled to share and do stamping with you. Um, let me think if there's anything else I want to mention before. I, I write notes on a paper and I stick them right in front of me below the camera here. So I'm just glancing through. Um, I think that's it. I hope that you had fun. Thanks everyone. Have a great day and a great week and we'll see you next week. I'd like you all now to go and stamp your art out. Oh, wait. Look at that. Now I'll say goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>